The Bible says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. The Bible says to wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil you're doing from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, and plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And when it talks about the sword, the sword is the word of God. The word of God is living and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even to the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. There's not one creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Every single person is going to give an account for the works done in the flesh on the day of judgment. Not a single person will be resistant from giving an account for every thought, word, and deed done in the flesh. The question is, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? And when I say, do you know him, are you obeying him? Are you doing everything he says? If you get yourself a red letter version of the New Testament of the Holy Bible, the words of Jesus Christ are printed in red. You can find out everything that he said. Now Jesus gave numerous commands through his earthly ministry. And you all know exactly what Jesus Christ commands of you because your eternity depends on it. If you are a rebel of God, if you go on every day sitting in thought, word, and deed, thinking that you're right with God, you're greatly deceived. You're being deceived by your wicked pastors in your evangelical and Protestant churches. They're lying to you. Pick up the Bible and read it for yourself. Hebrews 5 verse 9 says that Jesus Christ became the author of eternal salvation unto all those who obey him. So if you're not obeying the Lord Jesus Christ, doing all that he's commanded of you, you are not right with God and you are primed for judgment. The Bible talks about hell. It says it's a place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, where the worm does not die and the fire is never quenched. You are deserving of hell fire in your sin. But God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to be the atonement for your sin, that if you would so choose to repent of all your sin and put your trust alone in Christ Jesus, that you can have forgiveness for your sins and you can be made right with God through the atonement that he has made for you. God has made atonement for all people. There's not one select specific group as the Hebrew Israelite cult would like you to think, that the Mormons would like you to think, or the Jehovah's Witnesses, that they have an exclusive club. No, the Bible says that God commands all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness through the man whom he has ordained. He has given us assurance of this, raising him from the dead. And the Father raised Jesus Christ from the dead on the third day. He was resurrected and ascended into the heavens to the right hand of God the Father. And now he sits as the propitiation for your sin. But it's conditional on whether you're going to repent 
and turn to Christ in perfect obedience. The scripture says, be holy, for I am holy. You must live a holy life. You must turn away from all your sin. And it's only by the grace of Jesus Christ that you can do this. The grace of Jesus Christ is spoken of in Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 12. And it says, the grace of God, which brings salvation, has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. That means right now, not when you die. No, you're not going to be just free from all sin when you die. You're commanded to go and sin no more now. Once Jesus Christ has cleaned you up and filled you with his Holy Spirit, you're commanded to go and sin no more. You're commanded to live a righteous and holy life. The Bible says, he who is righteous, he who practices righteousness is righteous just as Jesus Christ is righteous. Oh, yeah? There's a whole bunch of them coming in that way. Oh, yeah? Yeah, let's go up this way. I had her go check. You got the sign, babe, the others. Bible says that he who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. Up here. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus Christ wants to destroy the works of the devil in your life. But it's conditioned on whether you're going to turn to him and be obedient. It's conditioned on you making the choice to repent. chapter 3 verse 3 then unless you're born again you shall by no means enter the kingdom of God you must be born again being born again is a spiritual thing when you truly believe in your heart the Lord Jesus and you believe that God has raised him from the dead truly in your heart God knows when this happens and he will put his Holy Spirit inside of you. And the Spirit will dwell in you. Your mind will begin to change. The things that you used to do, the sinful life that you used to live, will become vile. Thank you. Thank you. It will become offensive to you. You will hate your sin. And the result is that you will go and sin no more. It doesn't mean you can't sin. The scripture says, 
if we sin, that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he himself is the propitiation for our sin. Propitiation means atonement. So the blood of Christ is the atonement for your sin. It's the ability to even be forgiven at all. But after you've received the grace of God and you've come to know it, Titus chapter 2 verses 11 through 12 says, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, your whole mind will change. The Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And once this spiritual transformation has occurred, when you become born again, you'll notice that your old desires are going to start to fall away from you. And you will begin to seek God through his word. You will begin to want to seek God in prayer daily. And you'll turn away from the things of the world. Again, it's a choice, but the Bible says to love not the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of this world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. And this is the message that we have heard from him, and declare unto you, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with God and walk in darkness, we lie and we do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not some, not a lot, but not all. No, all. He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Little children, these things are written unto you that you may not sin. And if any man say have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he himself is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now, it's by this that we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, he who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Lots of people, in the Protestant and Evangelical groups know the verse John 3.16. And John 3.16 is a beautiful verse. But it's, it's only a part of the conversation that Jesus Christ was having with the Pharisee Nicodemus. And when it says, so for God so low that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It goes on in verse 17 through 21 to say that for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed, but he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. So what do your deeds say about you? Do your deeds prove that you have a living faith? Or do your deeds prove that you have a dead faith? Because it says in the book of James that faith without works is dead. 
So if your faith does not show good fruit, if your faith does not show that you are living a holy life that is assigned to you and those around you, that you are not of God and that you do not have the Spirit dwelling within you. You see, in the Gospel of John, it says that he that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. This living water is the Spirit. It's the evidence of your new birth. The evidence will flow out from you. You won't be able to help but run up to somebody and tell them the truth, no matter what. No matter what happens, you won't be worried about what's going to come of you, what of your flesh, but you will preach to your brother in righteousness and show him the, the danger that he's in. Do you have that yearning in you to shake your brother up and say, listen, man, I see the works of unrighteousness in your life that testify of the evil that's in you. Will you shake your brother up and tell him? See, lots of people like to say, oh, only, jo only God can judge me. But the thing is, the Bible says that the spiritual man judges all things. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. So when you live righteous and holy life and you're not hypocritically judging, then you can judge and you're actually commanded to do it. Jesus said, judge righteous judgment. Once again, as long as you are not living hypocritically, when you make that judgment, you're able to judge. And you should always judge by the scripture. You know, it says in Revelation chapter 3, verse 16, Jesus said, I could wish you were hot or cold. But because you're neither cold nor hot, but you're lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. This is a warning to lukewarm Christians, people who profess to know God, but in their works deny him. People who go to church on Sunday, go home and live like the devil the rest of the week. If you're sitting every, every day in thought, word, deed, and you're unrepentant, and you don't hate your sin, mark my words, you have a dead faith, and you're headed for hell. You see, the Bible says that you will know a tree by its fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. So if you're, you as a tree are producing bad fruit, bad fruit of sin in your life, drunkenness, pot smoking, revelries, fornications, adulteries, sports, idolatry, then you can be sure that you do not know God and you do not have his grace. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodly and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. So if that doesn't define your life, then you don't know the grace of God. Because that's what the grace of God will produce in you. The Bible says, be holy, for I am holy. God commands you to be holy as he is. Some people say that only God is holy, only God is righteous. But the Bible says that you are to be righteous. The Bible says that if you practice righteousness, you are righteous, just as Jesus is righteous. And that's what you're commanded to do as a Christian. I'm telling you, there's very few Christians walking around amongst you because many of them are just simply listening to the wicked Protestant and evangelical pastors who are telling them, oh, we just, you know, we all sin every day, it's okay. The blood of Jesus Christ covers you. If you are living in unrepentant sin, you are not right with God. And we come out here to tell you this, I don't really care what you think of me. I'm coming out here because I care for your soul and I don't want any of you to end up in hell. But the thing is, the Bible says that wide is the gate and broad is the way which leads to destruction. And many there are who go in by it. But enter in by the narrow gate, for narrow is the gate and difficult way which leads to life. And there are few who will find it.
few, far more people are going to go to hell than are going to go to heaven. This is from the mouth of Jesus Christ. He preached this on the Sermon on the Mount. It's not my words. It's not my wisdom. I'm just repeating it. I'm just a dumb parrot. right there okay sweet <laughs> I'm just I'm gonna read the sermon on the mount What I'm about to read is from Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter five, or th uh, five verses, or chapter five through chapter seven. This is all Jesus Christ preaching. This is called the Sermon of the Mount. Every single word was from the mouth of Jesus Christ Himself. And it starts in verse three, and it says, "Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted." Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall attain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the... You are the Lord, the city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Most assured say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of these least commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder. And whoever murders shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go ye. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him. Lest your adversary deliver you to the judge. The judge hand you over to the officer and you be thrown into prison. Assuredly I say to you, 
You will by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right eye or your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Furthermore, it has been said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no, no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Amen. But I tell you not to resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and just. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than the others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men, to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have the reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be done secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have the reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you do not do, or do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance. 
for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting. But to your Father who is in the secret place and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Yeah. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon means riches. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that not, say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. So fit for the day is its own trouble. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite! First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way which leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, 
Lord, Lord, shall, um, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name and then i will declare to them i never knew you depart from me you will practice lawlessness therefore whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them i will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain descended the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. That was entirely from the mouth of Jesus Christ. He gave, that's called the Sermon on the Mount. The greatest sermon ever preached. City property right there. No, you can't. Um, if it's an issue, I can call the sheriff's over, but I was, I was asked to come and let you know. Okay. I mean, you, yeah, I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're here to preach to people. Yeah, I mean, you, can't, you can't do that on this property. You can do that on your property. Well, you can't do that yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to step off your property right over here. It's got to be across the street. This is city, this is, this is city of Pittsburgh. City of Pittsburgh right here. There's well, we can do that. There's no amplified sound laws in the city of Pittsburgh. Yeah, I already looked into it. And this is private property. What, 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 which I'm stepping off. Of. And this is paid. This is private property. What, well, what, 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 which I'm stepping off of. Okay. Well, secondly, I mean, I'm, we're, we're not we're not we're not trying to argue. I just this is paid Wait, for. By, time if you call this this is paid for by taxpayer dollars and by the state government and even the national government, if it takes taxpayer dollars, we're public, it's open to the public. I mean, I can't enter the stadium, but if it's paid for by taxpayer dollars, we're allowed to be out here on the soccer. Okay, but it's, it's I mean, there's a cop right there. I understand that, but if you take, like, like for example, the, the, um, the Patriots, I can't be there because that's all 100% private funding. If it takes, if this takes taxpayer dollars. This is Stillers. This is Stillers. I know. Yeah, they're, they're I'm not gonna argue. I mean, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm yeah, not trying to be disrespectful. Yeah. And, and I appreciate that. I mean, if you want, we'll back up a little bit. I'll compromise it's, with you. We can back up. It has to be off property. It has to be off property. I'm sorry, man. Am I am I wrong? This 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 is the stadium property. Yeah, this is, is still stadium I, I'm property. I'm sorry. I I lost track. Where I thought this was like the public street. I see it's out there. Okay. I, I didn't mean to cause problems. Yeah, no, I just, you know, we just. I mean, this is stuff we do. If 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 it'll work for you guys. No, you're good. If it'll work for you guys. If, if we'll, we can go over there, go over there, and we'll be fine with that. Yeah, uh, that's a that's a compromise. What I was trying, you're an officer, right? Yeah. What I was trying to say is this is publicly funded. They took taxpayer dollars, and because they take take taxpayer dollars, we can be here because there's no amplified law against that because they took ta taxpayer this is dollars. This financial property. No, yeah, you're right. You're right. It's, it's private property. Private property. Well, if they take taxpayer dollars. But I'm not going. I'm not I mean, even going to argue about it. Argue. Yeah, I, yeah. You know what I'm it's private property. Like, just, just, just leave yeah, it. I mean, I, do your thing just somewhere else. Yeah. What, I'll, I'll what, what we're going to do? If it's a good compromise for you guys, we'll go right there. That's fine. Yeah, and we'll preach there I, with I'm, the bullhorn. No, yeah, we're, we. I, we'll go to public property. Now, <laughs> are you fine with us standing here and just handing out the tracks, or do we need to be across no, there? Actually, we don't let anyone hand out anything on property. So I mean, I'm about it, but. They don't like yeah, we'll, we'll just compromise, man. We'll go over there, and as long as I can hand out tracks in that area, yeah, all right, good we're good. I wasn't trying to argue. I just, I, I, I check into the laws. I know, I'm not arguing it. I just know that, I mean, I may be back here in the future, so if you could check it out for me, but I know, it, like for example, the NFL, well, the Patriots, 
They're 100% private funded money. The owner paid for all of his property. I could never be there. But even though they, this is private property, if it takes taxpayer dollars, the public's allowed to be here. Even if we use this, unless there's a law against amplified speech, which there isn't in Pittsburgh, but I, I'm not arguing, we're gonna go over there. Okay. But if you don't mind, I mean, if you guys could check that out, because I mean, I, I look at that stuff, so. Okay. But thank you. What? <laughs> oh. Somebody can Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Where did they kick you guys out to? Uh, just over here. What I was what I was saying, I wasn't trying to make a scene. I, I don't want to argue. What I was saying is even though this is Heinz Field, if they take taxpayer dollars, sure. I can be here. You would it, think. Yeah. But they have, they have now like like, like for example like for example, the the Patriots. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I used to watch the NFL. The Patriots, I can never enter anywhere on their property because they paid hey. for all of it. They didn't take one dollar for from taxpayers. Yeah. So they're for, they're that's the uh, only stadium. Isolated. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> like, but it's fine. I I just copied I said over there, that's fine. So Yeah. <laughs> uh, to stay here. Or? Yeah. Yeah, there's like tons of people over there. Too. Yeah, I wasn't trying to argue, but I, I know that that's if it's taxpayer funded, they can't tell us leave. But you know what? If there's a sidewalk right here, I'm not gonna sit there and. It's not like I'm gonna sit there and try to take it to court and fight and all that other stuff. I just, I know there's argumentation from Perry. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the Patriots, we can never, we can't be nowhere, we can't be on their property. The, he paid for all that stadium. But you know what? I didn't even notice this. This is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Wherever you want to set up, I don't know. Ugh. You want to preach? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I can preach. Ugh. Let me just get a drink, man, because I'm thirsty. I, uh, I kind of lost track of where I was there for a second, and I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just, I really, I'm not trying to, I just, I, I was like, I even, I'm not, I'm not arguing, but I wanted to run it past that cop so he knows in the future, but you know what, I didn't know it was like Are this. Are you going to preach? So, yeah. Okay, Oh, he's got his own. Yeah. Anybody? Yeah, yeah, because it'll squeal. God commands all men everywhere to repent because he is appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. It says in the scriptures, God, having raised his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from your iniquities. Your sins separate you from God, friends. Hey, that's, I think that's all the way up. Your sins separate you from God. And the scriptures say that God is angry with the wicked every day. Because of your iniquities, you have been separated from your God. And because of your sins, he hides his face from you so he will not hear. If you're still living in sin, God is not paying attention to your prayers. I'm going to have to be quiet. There's an ambulance there.
Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He said that he is the only way to God the Father. He died as an atoning sacrifice because we have all sinned. At some point in the past, we have all sinned, and your sin separates you from God. So God sent his Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, made himself lower than the angels, took on human flesh, died as a propitiation for your sins, because you have sinned against God. Not so you can continue in your sin, but because you've sinned against God, your sin separates you from God. But you can re be redeemed, you can be washed through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. So many in America are claiming that they are saved by faith alone. The Bible does not teach or say anywhere that you are saved by faith alone. Say as a disciple, like I appreciate you out here. I appreciate you doing work for the kingdom. Like this is a football game right now. It's a wild atmosphere, and you're doing this. Like that's this is smart, and I appreciate you. Oh, sure. hey, I appreciate it, man. No doubt. Hey, no doubt. hey, babe, give him a gospel track. I appreciate. It. I just had to listen to you Thank for a minute because we get so many people like, why are you doing this? Because I don't want people going to hell, man. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks, brother. You, man. Thanks, man. Get this game. Yep. Hey, All right, man. I'll see you in the kingdom. Yeah. Hey, watch out! Watch out! Yes, you can't earn your way to heaven. You've all sinned. We've all sinned against God. You can't earn your way to heaven. You must humble yourselves. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You must humble yourself. Recognize that you deserve hell. I still deserve hell for all the things I've done against God. But true grace is the power of God over sin in your life. Titus chapter 2 defines what the grace of God is. For the grace of God, which brings salvation, has appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. That is the grace of God. The grace of God is the divine influence of God upon your life, upon your heart. It's transformative power by the Holy Spirit that abides in you. <clears throat> the scriptures say, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. And that's what we're out here to do, friends. We are out here to persuade you to repent, forsake your sin, get right with Jesus Christ. Humble yourselves, make yourselves low. Man, how well are they even hearing me with all that noise now? Yeah, that's I'm gonna. Drowning. That's drowning you out. Yeah, I know. That's the problem. Yeah. They're they're drowning me out. Yeah, man. Like, like, might be a, a little better. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too, man. I but I don't think I've got much time left. Because I think they're gonna. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're, John three sixteen says, "For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son." that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe in him is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world. But men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light 
that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. So many in America are claiming they believe in God. Sure, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. And that is absolutely true. You can't earn it. You've sinned against God. But true Christians have victory over sin. Jesus said in John chapter 5 and John chapter 8, Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Do you think he meant it? Or do you think he was joking? Because so many in America say, well, you, you can't stop sinning. It's inevitable. My pastor says we're all born in sin. We can't stop sinning. But that is not what the Word of God says. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Jesus said, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. It says in Romans chapter 6, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we continue in sin? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey? You are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. Sin always leads to death. Obedience leads to righteousness. The wages of sin is death, the lake of fire for all of eternity. You have to forsake your sins. I know we look like fools out here and idiots. But God has used the foolishness of preaching to save those that will repent of their sins and turn to Jesus Christ. The fact of the matter is you are going to die. You're going to die unless Christ comes back in our lifetime. You're going to die and it says in the Bible, it is appointed for man to die once and after this comes the judgment. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You can be saved, you can be set free, you can be washed of your sins if you humble yourself. It says in the Bible, therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. We are called to be doers of the word. If the Holy Spirit of God is truly living in you, you are walking just as Jesus walked. So many claim to be Christians in America. How do you know someone's a Christian? 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. Now by this we know that we know Jesus, if we keep His commandments. He who says, I know Him, and does not keep His commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in Christ ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Yes, friends, if Jesus Christ is living in you, you are going to walk just as Jesus walked. Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will inherit the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. For many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name? And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So let me put that in layman's terms. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will inherit the kingdom of God, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. For many will come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, didn't I tithe the church? Lord, Lord, didn't I, didn't I go to church every Sunday? Lord, didn't I, didn't I confess you 30 years ago going up to the altar and saying the sinner's prayer? And Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. You who practice lawlessness. And it says in 1 John chapter 3, He who sins is of the devil, 
For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's the whole reason why Christ came in the flesh. To destroy the works of the devil. Have the works of the devil been destroyed in your life? If you're still sinning every day, you're not right with God. But God will have mercy on you if you repent. If you turn from your sins and turn to Jesus Christ. It is a full surrender to Jesus Christ. Gays can be set free. Gays can be I, set free? I used to be wicked. Yeah? I'm like covered in tattoos and everything else. Yeah, well, it's not. I don't think it's cool for in a, uh, the time we're in now to just... Yeah, you're right, because I'll fuck you up. Okay. God commands all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Uh, this is private property right now. I just talked to a cop over there and he said the sidewalk was fine. I, and I talked to the event staff. And frankly, I mean, I'm not I, being... I, I understand. Uh, and, not, and what we're telling you is that you, we, we block off this street. We rent it from the city. So from the towers to the streets that are blocked off, you can go down there and and speak everything well just like i told i told the cop you know i mean the cop was over there you can bring him over here but the thing is i'm telling you from the from the stadium side uh, yeah i'm just I'm, we've rented the, the space and it's private property right now well it that doesn't make it private property because for, first off like i was explaining to the cop respectfully i told him i said first off like for example the patriots i cannot go to the patriots game and preach why because he paid for all of it. He took no taxpayer dollars. And I understand. Pittsburgh Steelers took taxpayer dollars and just because even if you rent this, it doesn't make it private. Now if you're if I if I charge or something, I can't go in there and do it. But even the cop, the city cop down here, told me, go across the street on the sidewalk, that's fine. And that's what I did. And every time I turn around, somebody's telling me, go further, go further. Before I know it, I'm gonna be all the way down there where there's nobody. Like I said, we have a special event license right now. We're gonna, we'll, we'll go, we'll go ahead and compromise, but we're gonna have, we're gonna have to talk to some lawyers about this, cause I, I don't know what else to do. Every time I turn around, they're trying to move us down, and I just literally talked to an officer. You should have got his name. I mean, that officer was right over there. This is unbelievable, man. They just keep moving us and moving us and moving us and moving us and moving us. Where they want to put us now? Now they're saying all the way down there. I don't even know where. I mean, they're they're saying, well, we rented this, so that makes it. Oh, okay. That makes it private. All right. But that, you know, we'll we'll go down here, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep I'm not gonna keep moving. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it gets to the point where it's like you're gonna have to get the law, and they're gonna have to they're gonna have to sit there and and give me the consequences of what what it is which because, is I mean, gonna be nothing yeah because i mean you're just you're just you're getting to the point where you're just pushing us out to the road right. you know what i mean still over there? it's like man <laughs> what do you want to you want to go talk to this cop i mean this is just i don't even know if it's going to do any good because most of these cops don't even know the law yeah what do you think i mean by the time we walk down there nobody's Everybody, nobody's gonna be here. We might as well just leave. <laughs> I mean, there's still a pretty good set of people coming from that way, but um, yeah, at the same time, I hear you, man. Like, <laughs> we uh, we're not we're not outside our rights. No, we're not. They just you know, as soon as, as, soon as a street preacher standing around. Well, they just they don't they don't like the message, man. No, you know, unbelievable, man. <laughs> there it is. 
there was these two guys, they were both drunk, but there was these two guys like in bluish. Oh, I had a lesbian sit there and tell me she was going to whoop me, basically. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, okay. I, had a cat I didn't even say anything. I was just holding out the, the pornography track. Yeah. I was like this. And the guy's like, need to vote. You need to vote Republican. That's what you need to do. The pro that's, that's the problem right there is because you're a Democrat. He's, he's getting all huffy and puffy and stuff. And I'm like, are we done? I didn't even say anything. I don't. I mean, by the time we get down, I don't. Are they going to keep coming? Each walking down the sidewalk. The game starts at seven thirty. It's already I'm started. Gonna, I'm I'm gonna. Say these these now. guys are just. I mean, ridiculous, we can start man. heading back that way and just. And just I mean, can you get to the, the car from that going that way? I don't know. Uh, yeah, just I think just so. go down and yeah. go around. Yeah. So we could we could like you want to preach while we're walking? Yeah, I would say so. I'll hold the sign. You hold the sign. Yes. Yeah, that's what that's exactly what they think. It was post Augustine. Exactly right. Which really, we, I mean, we know from the Council of Nicaea afterwards it was starting to fall apart. Right. You know what I mean? But yeah, I mean, Augustine gave birth basically to the Catholic Church, man. Okay. I mean, you know, literally, like, right? Like, I mean, if they would just study the, I mean, it's not. There's not much to it. <laughs> it's like. That's actually one thing I was going to ask on. you. Uh, <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, Look I, out, I'd, like to, I'd like to um, get some of those books and start kind of like looking into, you know, what, they, what they're what they saying. Yeah, I, when, I, when I tell you what, when we, you know, when we fellowship tomorrow, I'll show you the dictionary I read from a lot. All right. Um, I can tell you now they held to a view on like marriage that I don't. <laughs> yeah. I, it, I mean, I know. We'll talk about this later. But for the most part, like probably in the 90s, I, it, it's literal rendering of the New Testament. You need to talk yeah. to Kerrigan what you need to do about Yeah, I'm gonna have to talk to Kerrigan about it. This is just, I just don't have the legal representation right now. Yeah, I mean, this is just ridiculous. I don't, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't have a big problem if it's busy being down there, you know what I mean? But they're, they're just gonna keep pushing you and pushing you and pushing you. I'd also like to get a copy of the Septuagint, but I was seeing like there's different. Yeah, I'll show I'll show you the ones I got at home. Test, test, test. Come on, man. Test, 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 test. Hit that same one. Oh, there's hardly anybody down there now. <laughs> Where, where's Adam at? Oh, hey, Adam. Um, can we get to our car from there? We can just walk in this way. We'll just walk and talk, man. Can you carry this, please? God commands all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Friends, your sins separate you from God. God does not want you to be punished for your sins, but is it imperative for you to forsake your sins? And God calls every, every man to repent, but real repentance is forsaking your sins, giving up your sins. So many in America claim to have the grace of God, but what is the grace of God? The grace of God is in Titus chapter 2. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people zealous for good works. So if you're claiming to be a Christian, you have been set free from sin, 
Sin does no longer have dominion over you. For you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? You gotta be off the property. That's where I'm going. You cannot be doing that on the property. I talked, I Let's spoke go. to a now. cop. The Lord commands all men to repent. All men everywhere to repent. Your sins separate you from God, friends. Yeah. because he's trying to talk. I'm not trying to blow people's eardrums out. So many in America claim to have faith. What does the Bible say about faith? James says, Someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Jesus said, you will know a tree by its fruit. A good tree produces good fruit. A bad tree produces bad fruit. God bless, brother. Oh, we, oh, we got kicked out. They couldn't stand me preaching the gospel there. <laughs> now, absolutely, man. It's a shame. God commands all men everywhere to repent. Your sin separates you from God, friends. The Lord God doesn't want that for you. He sent His Son to die as a propitiation for your sins so that you can be set free from your sin, not continue in your sin. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from sin. God doesn't want you to die and go to the lake of fire for all of eternity. That is God's jail cell for those that continue to live unrighteous. The Bible says, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Hey, I don't want to talk with these guys directly to travel. I don't want to do that to them, so... We come back here next time until I talk to Carrie and we figure out what we're gonna do. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to just sit out here and get them while they're flooding in. You know what I mean? I tell you what, this is a lot of people for a preseason game. <laughs> Woo! We allowed to cross or what? I don't know. I think we had the green light there. <laughs> it's like people are just going. Well, I mean, they're pretty much stopped. Let's cross. I mean, we'll just get yelled at.
Make sure you're holding it. Here, let me carry the bag while you hold the sign for a minute. I know, but I want the people to see the sign. Them, them signs are more effective than me preaching a basic message they barely hear. Well, Adam got a lot of preaching in before they stopped us. But. Well, babe, it's kind of, as soon as I start getting into it, they shut me down. I mean, good grief. I mean, Adam knows what I'm talking about. You start off kind of slow, and then it's like the Spirit of God starts filling you. You get more on fire, yeah. and then they just, you know, hey, you got to leave. That's the Spirit of the answer. Oh, you that. know that's what that is, man. I, I mean, I know because I've heard from Kerrigan. I'm going to talk to him when I'm down there yeah. to see what, you know, legal stuff he uses or whatever. But I know they're dead wrong about that. And that cop, you know, did you notice the cop didn't really, he kind of didn't really say much. He was just kind of like, well, yeah, I mean, it is their private property. Well, th that was more the security uh, event people. Sorry. God wants you to repent, though. God calls all men everywhere to repent. 